team. They have been suffocating on defense. Sensational on offense. 110 points the first game, 111 last night. And they did it with 39 assists on 46 field goals. That is an unbelievable statistic that points to team unity, unselfish play, and great team chemistry. Aboard our team, let's go to Dave Weekly and Mike D'Antoni. All right, Craig, thank you very much. Mike, looking forward to an outstanding game tonight. And Craig said it, 39 assists last night. Just an amazing performance in the defeat of the Dominican Republic. Hopefully we'll see more of the same tonight against Venezuela in this Group B matchup. Well, I'm sure you will. Their, their game plan will always be the same. Share the basketball, play hard, and turn up the heat on the defensive end, get up and down the floor. You know, they're going to keep it simple. We think we are going to have an outstanding game tonight. At halftime, we're going to have an extended visit with Team Mac, Tracy McGrady, who said after the game last night that 150 points for this Team USA squad in a game is a real possibility. They could be, and they better do it probably tomorrow against Virgin Island, but uh, uh, I don't think that's important. They just need to keep playing hard, keep focused. Next week, games will get tougher. Then they hit the semifinals, and finals will have to be, you know, hitting on all cylinders. This is the fourth of four games today. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results of games previous today. Mexico remains undefeated in Group A as they defeated Uruguay 80-68. to Edward Nahara had 21 points and a terrific game to this afternoon. Argentina defeated Canada 94-90. That was another Group A matchup. And in the game that just completed moments ago, the Dominican Republic outlasted Team USA's opponent tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock, the Virgin Islands, 69-65. to Up to the minute, a look at the group standings. First in Group A, where Mexico is undefeated, followed by Argentina. Canada and Puerto Rico are 1-1, one and, one, and Uruguay still looking for their first victory. Over in Group B, the United States is 2-0 and, oh, and can clinch the best record in this group with a win tonight. The Dominican Republic is 2-1, and one, followed by Brazil, Venezuela, and the U.S. Virgin Islands still looking for their first victory. One of the players that has just been on a roll in the early goings of this tournament has been Vince Carter, the former North Carolina All-American. Had an outstanding game last night, 15 points, two steals, and two assists. And he made the point that everyone on this squad has really got to put their ego aside and play for the betterment of the team. You know, you know that's true, and uh, they have done a great job at that. But, you know, it's kind of ironic that you should do that with any team, <laughs> not, just, not just because you have USA on, the, on your jersey. It should be that way all the time, and it's a pleasure to watch them do that, and that's why it's such an such a enjoyable show, and we'll watch the best team in the world play. Let's swing it back over to Craig Sager. Craig? Well, I'm with one of the assistant coaches, Oliver Purnell, Clemson head coach. This is the sixth time you've been involved with a team representing the United States. You haven't always had the best team like you do now. You record a startling 30 and one. What are the keys to putting together a team for a national play? Well, I think that that's it. it, it these guys have to become a team. These are obviously great players. If we can mold them into a team, a team that believes in defense and rebounding and really sharing the ball like these guys are, we're going to be awfully tough to beat. This coaching staff has established many points with these teams. They have told about leave your egos at the door, become a team. You also have to develop chemistry by going with the same starting rotation now for the third night in a row. Why? Well, I think the most important thing, first of all, is the guys have said we're going to leave the egos at the door. I think part of uh, Larry's strategy is to develop roles for these guys. We've got starters. We've got guys that come in and up the tempo for us. What about Venezuela? What's the scouting report on them? Well, they're very much like the team we played last night, Costa Rico. This game is not going to be about Venezuela. It's going to be about us really defending and rebounding and trying to get better. If we do that, we're going to be tough to stop. All right, thanks a lot. Back to you, Dave. All right, Craig, thank you so much. Our starting lineups tonight for the United States. As Craig mentioned, this is the lineup that we've seen the last three games in this tournament. Allen Iverson, Jason Kidd in the backcourt. Tracy McGrady, the leading scorer of Team USA at one forward spot. Jermaine O'Neal at the power forward slot. And Tim Duncan is going to try to avoid the early foul trouble that's plagued him in the first two games. For Venezuela, Diaz and Julio in the backcourt. Aguilera and Torres, the former Houston Rocket and Golden State Warrior, will be at the forward spot. And Guevara will be in the pivot tonight. 
Vince Carter, obviously off to a great start here in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And he feels that everybody on this United States team is on the same page as they go for the gold, hopefully next year in Athens. See, uh, that's why I think we, we, we'll get ourselves in trouble if we try to do extra, try to uh, just play our game. And I think that's what we've done. Uh, Coach Brown has done a great job preparing each one of us to play together as a team. And, and I think that was the thing he stressed was defense and play as a team. And, and, and just being selfish, yeah, we're going to have a lot of turnovers, but I think we only had six or seven the last time I looked. I could be wrong. But we only had six or seven turnovers, so we're looking for each other, but yet we're protecting the ball at the same time. So it is fun to play. Well, Vince Carter has been spectacular, to say the least, in the first two games of this affair. Team USA has games, while yesterday Venezuela had the day off after a frustrating two-point loss to the Dominican Republic on Wednesday night. Franklin Western scored 25 points for the Dominican Republic. Venezuela's Victor Diaz had 15 points, but he missed a potential game-winning three-point shot at the final buzzer. Venezuela will look to try to bounce back a little bit. We'll see how it goes, but I think they make a key point with Team USA. Vince Carter saying, you don't want to come out and look for the spectacular play. If they just keep it simple and play hard, they are spectacular. The plays will come out, and it'll be a great show, whether they win by 30 or win by 10 or whatever it is. Venezuela in the white uniforms, trimmed in maroon, and for the second consecutive night, the United States is in the blue uniforms, trimmed in red and white. And I noticed that the Team USA coaching staff breaking out the red polo tops tonight for the uh, first time. They're looking good. They all got the memo. <laughs> Tim Duncan set to jump center for the United States. Game three of the FIBA Tournament of the Americas for Team USA is underway and Venezuela controls the basketball. And maybe just a little bit tight. Guevara with an air ball from outside the arc. And the United States takes possession. They should have seen the face of the Venezuela coach, <laughs> Coach Salazar. He was stunned by that shot. <laughs> I don't think they talked about that before the game. This is Allen Iverson. Oh, what a killer crossover. Iverson from the baseline. Great assist by Tracy McGrader, keeping it simple, hitting Iverson. Great basketball. Diaz looking inside. This is Torres. And Torres has his shot rejected by Tracy McGrady. You know, Oscar Torres is going to be the focus of, of their offense, Venezuela's offense. NBA player, played at Houston, Golden State. Iverson threw it away in the lane. Stolen by Torres. And back comes Venezuela. Here's Diaz. Three-point attempt offline. Tim Duncan, the rebound. Yeah, Venezuela is a little tight starting the game off. Maybe the, the day off didn't help him any. Jermaine O'Neal down the lane. Right in front of the rim, could not get the bank shot to go. O'Neal started off very quickly last night against the Dominican Republic, crashing the boards, eight early points, but then he had to leave the lineup because of a, a cut on the elbow. Diaz kicks it back outside. This is Torres. And the shot is rejected by McGrady. And that's a shot clock violation by Venezuela. Terrific team defense by the United States. It was good defense. Venezuela was moving the ball better. They had a couple of opportunities to take a shot, pass them up. And once you find an open shot against Team USA, you're going to have to take it immediately. You will not find two shots. Duncan spinning in the lane and the. Shot is tapped in by Jermaine O'Neal. Great tap by O'Neal. As you notice, the ball may be, may, might have been in the cylinder in international play. That's fine. Diaz on the pull-up pop. It's an air ball. Duncan with his second rebound. And the quick outlet pass intended for Allen Iverson is thrown away. That's the United States turnover. You know, talking before about tapping the ball when it's in the cylinder or on the rim, offensively or defensively, international ball, you can do that. I think that's a, a rule change that, or a rule that needs to be considered very closely by the NBA. It adds to the game, it adds excitement. It's a good rule. Three-point shot up and good by Aguilera. Yeah. 
Jason Kidd with a basketball. He had 10 assists last night. McGrady. Oh. Wave off the dunk. And the foul will be whistled on Victor Diaz. You know, again, tonight Team USA coming out a little bit slower. They've had that, uh, they started kind of slow the first two games. Their defense seems to pick up maybe when the subs come in, but also getting their, uh, getting their legs together. O'Neal and McGrady with a little two-man game. Oh, oh, that was plow the road, <laughs> Jermaine O'Neal. Now that is not a rule change. I don't think you can take four steps and still dunk it and get away with it. Guevara gives it up to Torres. Torres takes it to Duncan, and Duncan picks up the foul. And Tim Duncan's been saddled with early foul trouble in the first two games of this tournament, picking up two quick fouls in the victories over Brazil and the Dominican Republic. You know, Oscar Torres is a, is a legit NBA player. He's a great body. Uh, 28 points is as high at Houston. 16 he had in Golden State. Looking for a team. He's been released, but you know, he has NBA talent. He's a, he's a legit player. Two years ago for the Houston Rockets, played over 60 games. And last year for Golden State, 17 games before he was released. One more for Torres. You know, talking to him before the game, he was really surprised that Houston let him go. He thought that, or when he got picked up by Golden State, he, he thought he was on the team. Free throw is missed, and Venezuela will keep it. Missing free throws. There's a look at Nestor Salazar, the head coach of Venezuela. Missed free throws really hurt Venezuela in their loss against the Dominican Republic. They were just 18 of 28 at the line Ooh. in a two-point loss. And as Allen Iverson goes into the fifth gear, he is fouled in the backcourt by Torres. That's his first. That was a perfect pass to Iverson, who was wide open. The problem was he was on another team. <laughs> Second team foul of the first quarter for Venezuela. Iverson gets a pick from Jermaine O'Neal. Oh, nice. oh my. Nice. Iverson teed it up. T-Mac hammered it down. And Julio with the dunk at the other end. And the foul's going to be on Jermaine O'Neal. And that brings the Venezuelan bench to their feet. Well, the same thing happened the other night with uh, Brazil. A couple of dunks. Got them fired up. Gave him a little courage. Maybe this will help Venezuela at the beginning. And especially important after the great dunk we just saw by, by McGrady. To come back and answer with a dunk of their own. Good job. Torres with a great feed. Shot is missed. Long outlet pass from Kidd to Iverson. Oh, my. Oh. That was not an instant replay. Iverson to McGrady for another spectacular flush. Uh oh, here they go. Iverson with a strip. Stolen back by Guevara. Jermaine O'Neal controls the rebound. Back and forth we go. Fast and furious in the early action. Iverson won't stay in there for him. Hey, Allen Iverson is so quick, it's ridiculous. Iverson, seven points, two assists, and four rebounds in 20 minutes last night against the Dominican Republic. Oh, my goodness. Iverson read that pass all the way. Well, it was funny, coming into the game today, I saw a whole family wearing Iverson jersey. The mother, the three sons, <laughs> the father, everybody had an Allen Iverson shirt on. Torres. Line drive, three-point attempt, won't go. Rebound, Tim Duncan. Iverson always looking with, for the pass with his head up. Got into traffic, turned it over. Guevara. Shot is missed by Julio. Now, for Venezuela to even have a chance, those have to go down. Here's Iverson on the pull-up. Got it. That's a two-point basket. Good timeout by Venezuela to give a... Talk about it a little bit. 444 to go in the first quarter. Team USA out to a 14 to 6 edge on Venezuela. 
The United States 2-0 against Venezuela in America's Olympic qualifying tournament play. Team USA recorded an 83-61 win over Venezuela in the 1999 Tournament of the Americas, played right here in San Juan. Well, the juice got turned up a little bit more for the United States uh, off the bat. You know, instead of taking 10 minutes to get warmed up, getting the subs in, Allen Iverson gave him a little spark right now that uh, got the crowd into it. A couple great dunks by McGrady, and they're off and running. Here's another look at that lob to Tracy McGrady, T-Mac with a throwdown. It was just, you know, the, just super about sharing the ball. It's so simple right there, Jason Kidd, seeing Iverson open up, open on the wing, easy pass, nothing di difficult, and a great shot by Iverson. Allen Iverson has been the focus of so much attention here in San Juan. After the game, he has the majority of the reporters around him. He is the favorite of the fans, and he has been spectacular. Well, the thing probably most satisfying is just how they have conducted themselves on and off the court. It's uh, nice to see them around the hotel, mingling with the other players, staying in the same hotel with the other players. Uh, it means a lot to international or also relationships and everything else. They're doing a great job of conducting themselves like good people, and they are. Many of the Team USA players got away today for a little golf at noontime before tonight's game. And they had good weather to do that. It was overcast and cool today in San Juan after some terrific heat. Super hot conditions earlier in the week, but very pleasant today. Missed by Julio. Here comes Jason Kidd. Benzema Wayla might want to think twice about going into the post and, and trying to post Duncan or O'Neal up. That won't get it done. Duncan puts it on the floor, off the glass. No good, but a foul is called. Tim Duncan's going to the free throw line. You know, the way the game is being played, getting up and down, big guys get left out a little bit. By the time they get down the floor, there's already McGrady or somebody's already dunking it. So it's nice when, a, when you get into a half-court set, let the big guys touch the ball. Herbert Bayona is whistled on the personal foul. He's a 6'11", 245-pound center, 25 years old, Played some college basketball in the United States at St. Francis of New York. In fact, Mike, seven members of this Venezuelan basketball team played college hoops in the U.S. A lot of the teams here are represented. Most of them come through the college system. Under four minutes to go in the first quarter. Still no substitutions for the United States. Jason Kidd had it and lost it. Good hustle. Carlos Morris got it back to Diaz for the three. Got to knock that one down because there's going to be two points on the other end. Behind the back flip to Tracy McGrady. The defense by Team USA is impressive. I'm sure Venezuela, they, they think they're playing against at least nine or ten guys on the floor. <laughs> they're just, they cannot find an open shot. Everything is, is rushed. Everything is, is difficult. They can't post anybody up. So, just they don't have a whole lot of answers for it. Luis Julio exits the lineup. And Rosemel Blanco makes oh. his first appearance for Venezuela. This is Jason Kidd. Duncan the rebound. Look at those blue jerseys on the offensive glass. Jermaine O'Neal got the offensive board, and he was fouled. Duncan was kind of missed for a little lob. Look for it this time. He was, he was open last time for the lob. Probably he and Jason communicated it. Also, Vincent Wade probably won't. They probably stepping in front of Duncan this time. The foul was on Morris. That is team foul number five, and that will put the United States in the bonus for the remainder of the first quarter. Team USA with a 10-point lead, 16-6. to six. Oh, they were already in bonus. That's good. Two shots for O'Neal. One more for Jermaine O'Neal. O'Neal, 14 points last night, 7 of 10 from the field, 7 rebounds in 19 minutes. 
against the Dominican Republic. One of two from the line for O'Neal of the Indiana Pacers. Quickly coming back oh, the job, other way is job. Venezuela. And it's Morris beating everybody back for the layup. Tell Team USA napping a little bit. Cross-court pass to Iverson. His three-point shot won't stay in there. Collected by Morris. He's bringing some energy to the Venezuelan five on the floor right now. Morris. Venezuela needed that. Pulls them to within six points. That's just a great shot by Morris. It's probably only criticism. He's a little inconsistent. They need a big game out of him tonight. Kid kicks it into Jermaine O'Neal. Oh. Kid the lob <laughs> and tapped in by Tracy McGrady. <laughs> Ernesto Mijares is running the point now for Venezuela. Looks like the Elton Brand, Mike, Mike Bibby is going to be checking in, trying to keep the energy up. Sagged a little bit in the last two plays. Too strong by Bayona. That was an ugly shot. Great pass. Iverson just looped it up near the rim. Duncan collected the basketball and dropped it in. Team USA with a 10-point lead again. Long rebound controlled by Morris. Kick it back outside to Mahares. Doing a great job on defense again. Team USA switching. All, oh, McGrady anticipating that pass. T-Mac. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tracy McGrady brings the fans to their feet here in San Juan with another flashy stuff. That's already three or four dunks tonight. He's had a great game, and it's only the first quarter. McGrady now leads all scores with eight. Morris wants to take Iverson. That, will get <laughs> that is going to be a tough proposition. <laughs> As we go further in the week, you'll see teams will do a better job. They will not challenge Team USA in the middle. That will be a kick out to a guy in the corner taking a three-point shot. Kid, McGrady, and O'Neal lead the lineup. Vince Carter, Elton Brand, Mike Bibby, and Ray Allen enter the lineup for the United States. Team USA getting two shots for one. Mike Bibby. That's a three-point shot for Mike Bibby. Miguel Marihara has checked in for Venezuela, number 11 in white. Team USA shot 65% in the first half last night. They're off to a good start again tonight. But look at Venezuela now, 4 of 19 from the field. Ray Allen. Allen. That's a rare miss for Ray Allen in the first two games combined. The sharp shooting guard of the Seattle Supersonics hitting 75% from the field. Ten minutes in the books. And Team USA ends the first quarter with a 26-11 lead. Well, tonight they didn't start off as slow as they did the other two nights. That's a positive. Of course, Venezuela might be a, not quite as good as the other two teams they played. But Team USA seems they're getting their chemistry together even more. Uh, they make the game look so easy, and it is easy for them at this point. Craig Sager. Well, Mike D'Antoni said the U.S. is making this look easy. Mike Wells, who's with me now, assistant coach of Team USA, is the one who put the game plan together, passes on to Larry Brown. What have you seen out here based on the strategy going in? Well, I think it's exactly like we thought it would be. You know, we wanted to force the tempo and create easy opportunities, and I think that's what we did. We got off to a good start finally. What is your job throughout the game and afterwards? 
uh, just to break down the tape and uh, kind of evaluate how we play because we want to get better as the, as the tournament goes along. We've only been together a short time, so as a team, we just want to develop a little continuity and keep getting better as a team. You're one guy that has to look ahead. <laughs> Who in this tournament scares you? Well, of course, Argentina is a very good team. They've been together for a long time. They've got a couple of NBA play players and uh, Brazil. And, of course, I think you got to talk about the home team and Puerto Rico. With a, They're going to have the crowd behind them. And uh, Canada's played very well with Steve Nash. When you put together a tape afterwards, it's a little different from our highlight tape. But do you like to watch those dunks back and forth that we see from a Grady and Carter? Yeah, I think everybody likes those dunks. That's what makes the game fun, especially with this guys. All right, good job. All right. Let's go back to Donna, Dave. All right, Craig, thanks a lot. Speaking of the, the big time dunks. That's a rocket right there. That's unbelievable. Man. Unbelievable. And what's unbelievable, that's just not one time. He's already done it four times this game, first quarter. Mike Bibby, Ray Allen, Vince Carter, Elton Brand, and Kenyon Martin now into the game to start the second quarter for the United States. You know, before talking about Argentina, it was a great game that, today between Argentina and Canada and Steve Nash is phenomenal he makes the whole team so much better Team Canada who doesn't they don't have a whole lot of names just a lot of young kids playing and it's all spearheaded by him he did a great job he was six for six from three point didn't make a two-point shot has 24 points and they almost they almost beat Argentina and for Argentina that would have been a disaster having two losses this early in the, in the uh, tournament Argentina was upset by Mexico in their first game. Elton Brand, the offensive rebound. Carter back to Brand. And that'll be goaltending. Count the basket for Elton Brand. One more point about Steve Nash. Nash led Canada to a win over Puerto Rico in this facility last night. And it was really rocking inside the Roberto Clemente Coliseum for that one. And following their loss to Argentina this afternoon. We caught up with Steve Nash and Mano Ginobili, and we'll hear from both of them at halftime. Carter nearly had the steal. Julio down the lane, and it looks like Kenyon Martin will be called on the personal foul. Well, the hardest thing for Team USA to do right now is just not look at the scoreboard. They're up 17 points. They, you know, you can do one of those polls that the NBC does on uh, on uh, election day where it's already been called. The game, the game is over. Team USA has won. You know, two percent of the vote is in. We're going to call it for Team USA. But not watch the not watch the scoreboard. Play, get better as a team, and have fun. Share the basketball. That'll be the hardest thing for them to overcome tonight. One more free throw for Julio, knocks it in. He had 14 points against the Dominican Republic for Venezuela. Here's Mike Bibby. Bibby has looked great in this tournament in the first three games. You know, one thing Venezuela is not doing, they are not running back and picking up shooters. Uh, you know, you can do that. You might not be able to stop them, but they're not even in the area. They're going to have to figure out who's guarding who, run back, at least get in front of them. Good ball movement on this possession for Venezuela. Shot is missed. Kenyon Martin the rebound off to of Mike Bibby. Look away pass to Brand. And Brand is fouled and he'll go to the line. And when Elton Brand gets the basketball three feet from the goal, it's either a basket or a foul. Yeah, he usually comes in. Oh, he always plays with high energy. And in, inside, he gets position inside. There is no way you're going to stop him. Again, Venezuela has to do the work early. They at least have to get down, find their man, try to pick him up a little bit before they get so deep where once they get the ball, it's, it's two points. Elton Brand, one of the players on this squad that was on the 2002 USA squad that had a sixth-place finish in the World Championships last year in Indianapolis. And along with Jermaine O'Neal, Brand and O'Neal are definitely out for blood in this tournament. They'd really like to reestablish the, the good name of United States basketball. And I'm sure the, the experience will be a little bit, a little bit more fun this year than it was last year. Morris. Oh, and that will count. Oh, he's had two great three-point shots. 
his second three-pointer. Got that one off just prior to the shot clock expiring. Brand controls the entry pass. Good movement by Ray Allen. Great Bibby. job. Great job. Another three-pointer for Mike Bibby. His third. Just Ray Allen set all that up. No hesitation whatsoever in his pass over to Bibby, giving Bibby time enough to measure his shot and knock it down. Blanco could not catch up with that rocket pass and intended into the low post. There, there was the pass by Ray Allen right there. You don't realize how easy a pass it is, but if you look, if Ray Allen looks for his shot first, the ball arrives to Mike Bibby a little late. He rushes his shot. His percentage goes way down. Diaz and Guevara return for Venezuela. Carlos Morris leaves the lineup. Mijares also out of the game. Aguilera returns. Well, Coach Salazar, he, he probably realizes that he has to keep fresh troops at least on the court or they will get clobbered, which they might anyway, but doing a good job of mixing guys up, bringing them in, keeping them fresh. And that's one thing Team USA has been doing the last two games. They just wear you out physically and mentally. In the first game against Brazil, the United States had a two-point lead at the half. Then in the third quarter, held Brazil to just eight points as the defense, as you said, Mike, just wore Brazil down. Yeah, you can see it on their faces. Their bodies were, their shoulders were sagging. They, they couldn't, you know, could not find a shot. Aguilera looking inside. Torres will take it into the paint. Too strong. Aguilera, his shot attempt is blocked, and he is fouled and will go to the free throw line. Elton Brand whistled on the personal. That's his first. Team foul number two against the United States. Good rebound. Brand got him on the arm, clearly. One more for Tomas Aguilera, 6'6", age 25. He led Venezuela. In fact, he led all teams in the South American games in rebounding. Thirty-five, eighteen. You know, it's funny, Team USA have been talking about getting 150 points, been talking about the margin of victory, 46. I'm sure they have little goals set in each team coming on. This is the second group coming in there right now and trying to keep up with those records that were set in 92. Ray Allen threw that ball away. The pass was intended for Vince Carter. Diego Groveria running the point for Venezuela. Offline with a long three-point attempt. Here comes Team USA again. It's a four on two. Carter. Oh. You know, Guevara, who had the, the point guard for Venezuela, was in Chicago Bulls camp not this past summer, but, or not this summer, but last summer. And he's had two shots tonight that barely stayed on the aisle of Puerto Rico. They had to close the doors on those two shots. He might be a little nervous. Vince Carter with two free throws. Well, when we knew there would be a number eight on the United States squad as the Team USA coaching staff looks on, we assumed that number eight would be Kobe Bryant, but because of his injuries, he was unable to play here in San Juan, and Vince Carter was a late addition to that squad. It's a pretty good pickup when you're a coach oh. and uh, you can pick up uh, Vince Carter on waivers. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Vince Carter led the United States team in scoring at the 2000 Summer Olympic Games en route to a gold medal. Aguilera and Vince Carter battle for the ball and it'll belong to the United States. You mentioned Steve Nash a moment ago. When Vince Carter got the call that he was going to replace Kobe Bryant on this squad, he had to leave his basketball camp that was in progress in Toronto. So who stepped in for him? Steve Nash did. 
Uh, Steve Nash is a great guy, and he's a basketball junkie. Elton Brand with a miss. And Aguilera is going to be called for the foul as Kenyon Martin was battling for that offensive rebound. So speaking of Steve Nash, just watching him play, and I, I you know, mentioned it before, but just how he interacts with the other Canadians on his team, how he builds their confidence up. If they make a mistake, he's always there to encourage them, and they were playing, they were playing well. What a great feed, Kenyon Martin to Elton Brand for the dunk. Diaz down the lane, and he is fouled and will head to the free throw line. So I, it, just to follow up on that, Mike, I guess we can look forward to a possible matchup of Canada and Team USA next week in oh, the second no, round. Yeah, no doubt about it. It'll be a super game. Well, next week you have Team Canada, you have Puerto Rico, you have Argentina, you have Mexico, and the United States has to play each, each team, and those are four great games. Quick reminder that Team USA has played their first three games in the opening round of the FIBA Tournament of the Americas at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Tomorrow will be the first time that the United States will play earlier in the day. They will play at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And, of course, all games in the first two rounds, the semifinals and the finals, are available only on pay-per-view. Tomorrow against the Virgin Islands at 5 p.m. 5.27 to go in the first half. And we have got an official timeout on the floor. United States leads Venezuela 38 to 20. Kind of an odd stat there where Team USA with more turnovers than Venezuela, 8 to 5, but the United States, of course, leading on the scoreboard, the more important. Well, stat. you know, they, I'm sure the percentage of uh, the Venezuela shot chart does not look too good there's a lot of empty circles on that chart they just have a hard time finding a shot and once they find it they've worked so hard that they're not shooting the ball well at all Nestor Salazar working with the Venezuelan national squad Salazar has been the head coach of the Venezuelan junior national team since 1999 and he took over as the head coach of the Venezuelan national squad this year and has led them into the South American Championships and into the FIBA Tournament of the Americas, the pre-Olympic qualifier in basketball for next year's Summer Olympic Games in Athens, Greece. Matchup tomorrow against the Virgin Islands is... Uh, Kind of a game that's been circled on the calendar of Tim Duncan for quite a while. Tim Duncan, of course, was born in the Virgin Islands, played junior basketball for the Virgin Islands, but when he did that, the Virgin Islands did not have a senior national squad. So once he started playing basketball for the senior nationals of the United States, he was unable to play for the Virgin Islands. And so tomorrow, he's going to be in the unique position of playing against his countrymen. And that happens uh, not all the time, but there's a lot of, uh, a matter of fact, I played for the Italian national team. We didn't play against the Team USA, but uh, in the European Championship, I was able to represent Italy, and great experience, great time. 11 on the shot clock. United States with a basketball under their own hoop. Bibby, the attempted lob to Kenyon Martin. Yeah. Three or four minutes ago, Tim Duncan was there. It was, it was open. They, they saw that he was open, tried it with Kenyon Martin, and the pass was just a little bit off. Diaz offline with that three-point attempt from the wing. Bibby to Ray Allen. And he has the ball stripped by Diaz. Off to Torres. It's a four-on-two. And quick hands by Kenyon Martin as he goes flying into the Venezuelan bench. Diaz did a great job of breaking up the fast break by Team USA. Coming back with just too many hands. Too, Team USA just a little bit too, too quick to get an easy shot against him. Rafael Guevara, number seven in white, returns for Venezuela. And here comes Richard Jefferson into the lineup for Elton Brand. Jefferson into the game in the first half for the first time in this tournament. And Team USA has decided to go real small. They got Kenyon Martin at, uh, at the center, and they've got Vince Carter at the four. Should be able to switch everything and look, look like a zone, but 
shouldn't get guys open, but he did. Great shot. Victor Diaz with a jump shot over Mike Bibby. Running the offense on the low post through Martin. And Ray Allen can't control the basketball. Turnover number 10 for the United States. Uh, Vince Carter made a win baseline. Ray Allen did a great job of floating to the corner, which is always open. Carter was looking to try to dump it off to Kenyon Martin. Missed, missed Ray Allen in the corner. Loose ball, controlled by Venezuela. Three on the way, go. good. Now he's got it. Diego Guevara with the three-point shot. Guevara has finally found the range. That will help them if they start knocking down some threes. Venezuela back to within a dozen. Well, Team USA has gotten sloppy. Venezuela missed a golden opportunity for an easy basket there, and it's another turnover. Over and back the call, and the United States will have it. Back into the game for the United States, replacing Kmart. Still going small now. They've got Duncan in the middle. So like we talked before, I think that Team USA looked up at the scoreboard. They were up, way up. And they've just kind of, it's, it's a natural reaction. It's, uh, it's the third game in three nights. And, and for them just to keep their focus is, is not easy. Oh, Good Richard pass. Jefferson with the feet inside to Tim Duncan. Won't get much easier than that. Well, Mike, let me just bring this up to you. I just want to reiterate, are you still standing by your pledge that the United States will win each game in this tournament by an average of 30 points? <laughs> an average, yes, I'll take it. There'll be some games where they'll get tested a little bit, a little bit. Mike Bibby on the foul. Bibby made some headlines in Sacramento this morning, making a, a comment. To, he addressed some rumors that he was out a little bit too late during the playoffs last year, and in particular, game five of the series they lost to the Dallas Mavericks. He said those rumors are absolutely not true, and he chose this format, this tournament in San Juan, to address that. Made it, no, made it known in no uncertain terms that those rumors were untrue. Long shot missed. Here's Bibby coming quickly back. Ray Allen. And Ray Allen, one of the best free throw shooters in the NBA, is heading to the line for two. The foul is called on Miguel Mari Haga. You know, just getting back to Bibby for a second. You know, it's the world we live in. They're just rumors. And it can start anyway. You're talking about one of the best point guards in the league two years ago. Was, if it wasn't for a jump shot by Robert Ory at the top of the key against Sacramento at the last second, he would have won an NBA title. He played unbelievable in the, against uh, the Lakers in that, uh, in that final uh, in the Western Conference. Comes back next year, he does get hurt. He did not come back as well as maybe uh, as the year before, which was, un which was phenomenal. So, you know, he has to deal with it. He has to put it to rest. He, he's getting himself ready for next year, and I fully expect him to be a, a superstar like he is. Yeah, he addressed the, the injury as well, Mike. He missed the first 27 regular season games last year before returning in mid-December, and he did admit yesterday that he just wasn't quite physically ready to come back. But he's a competitor. He wanted to get back into the lineup. And there's a young fan hanging on the rail. They're, they're all over the rafters here in San Juan to, to get a look at some of the best basketball players on the planet. I fully expect with three minutes to go in the second quarter, Team USA should put on a little burst of energy here, trying to go into halftime with about a 20-point lead. Ray Allen couldn't play in the 2002 World Championships in Indianapolis because of tendonitis in his left knee. And he talked about that this oh. week, saying he was working out in Chicago when he saw the United States lose that game to Argentina last year. And it said it, it really gave him a bad feeling. And this year, this team trying to get to Athens, it's a, a call to arms. And that's a direct quote for the pride of United States basketball. Ray Allen is one of the classiest guys in the NBA, just a super guy. Pretty good golfer, too. <laughs> Took some money from me the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Ray 
Here's Ray Allen. The dump down to Duncan, and he puts it up and in. Great feed. Well, you mentioned he's a nice guy. Well, obviously a lot of folks agree with that because he was the recipient of this year's Joe Dumars Trophy that goes to the NBA Sportsman of the Year. Uh, he's just he's very classy, very intelligent. Just does a great job of representing the United States and the NBA and himself. Team USA pushing their advantage back up to 18 points at 44-26. Shot off the baseline by Aguilera is no good. Oh, yes. Waiting on the big fellow to get in the post. Here's Jefferson. Richard Jefferson of the New Jersey Nets. Doing a little half-court trapping. He's trying to speed Venezuela up, get him out of the comfort zone. Mike Bibby taps it off to Allen. It's a three on two. Ray Allen, what a great move to the basket, up and in. Ray Allen's got four. Oh. Oh, the United States doing a good job now. They're just, just making them play fast. Three-pointer up and good for Victor Diaz. He has shot the ball well today. Now we've got a whistle in the low post. Going to be an offensive foul on Richard Jefferson. <laughs> Allen Iverson and Tracy McGrady and Jason Kidd returning. All right, Mike, who did better, the first or the second unit? <laughs> it's a tough call, isn't it? pick one. I'm sure Coach Brown right now is down there with a the calculator trying to figure out everybody's minutes and get everybody more or less the same minutes so it doesn't have to have a problem. Well, it wouldn't be a problem, but... Just trying to make, be fair to everyone. Diaz, can he make it two in a row? Yes, he can. And he is shooting the basketball. <laughs> Diaz now with 11 points to lead Venezuela. And a whistle as we go under one minute in the first half. Aguilera is going to be whistled on the foul. That is his second foul. Sending Richard Jefferson to the line. One more for Jefferson. That's one place the U.S. Have not, has not done a very good job. They've missed a lot of foul shots tonight, and that just comes from concentration. Jefferson with one of two. At the line, the United States just 9 of 19 against the Dominican Republic last night, include, including 0 for 4 by Tracy McGrady. And here's Jefferson. And wave it off the whistle before the, the dunk. And the foul is going to be called on Gravera. There's a great still. Let's take a look at it. Just great hands. Great quickness. Probably mugged him a little bit, but that's okay. Rattles in for Richard Jefferson. So Team USA just 9 and 19 at the line against the Dominican Republic last night, and that is after a, a performance against Brazil going 23 of 28. Tonight the they're 9 of 14, so they're, they're improving. Aguilera goes up between three Team USA players to get the ball, and then is found by Jason Kidd. And Jason Kidd picks up his first personal foul. And with 39.2 seconds to go in the first half, free throws coming for Venezuela. It's got to be a relief for Tim Duncan that this is really the, the first game this week that he's been able to stay out of early foul trouble. Duncan yeah. with just one foul here tonight. You know, he's just, he's just so good. He's just, he's just, he's cagey. He's just, he's just playing. He lets everybody play. He'll get his 20 points at the end of the night. And then uh, <laughs> next week when the games get a little harder, he'll get a little better. When the games get really hard, then he'll get really good. <laughs> you know, he's just, you know, he's one of the top three players in the game right now, if not the best, best player. 
Well, they pulled off a great daily double this year. NBA MVP and then MVP of the NBA Finals against the New Jersey Nets. Should be a quick shot coming up trying to get two for one. See what happens. Or a quick turnover to get two for one. Yeah, <laughs> that'll work. Iverson not able to connect with Tim Duncan. About a five-second differential on the shot clock and the game clock as we turn under a half a minute to go here in the first half. Team, Team USA showing a little zone, a little 3-2. Everybody's kind of kind of loose. Uh, hey, Benzaway, they're starting to knock down some threes. Guevara nice cuts the lead time. to 15. T-Max got to get it up. And he knocks it in at the horn. Unbelievable shot. That's not even fair. That will go as a two-point field goal. Probably Iverson had the, uh, the first possibility to have a shot, passed it over, clock running down, and just right in a couple mugs. Great shot. Craig Sager standing by with Allen Iverson. Well, and tonight the team obviously got off to a much better start, a little sloppy play in the second quarter, but why the good start? I think we um, understood what we needed to do um, from the beginning of the game. We didn't want to give them any type of confidence. Just try to come in and jump right on defensively and let the offense handle itself. You had the first basket of the game, and then a couple of times you were in the lane and passed up some shots. I heard Popovich and also Brown yell, Allen, shoot the ball. When's the last time a coach told you to shoot the ball? <laughs> you really don't have to tell me to, but, I mean, I'm just trying to um, – play the game the right way and uh you know take what the defense giving me i think i have been passing up some shots and it's um turning into turnover so um it's just important for me to stay aggressive but um still uh keep my teammates in mind and you know just look for them when i penetrate to the basket all right thanks a lot thank you Dad. all right thank you so much that's a great point by craig about Allen iverson stepping up and getting advice to shoot the ball that doesn't happen very often he gets his share of shots for the Philadelphia 76ers. Now he does get his share of shots, but if I'm coaching the 76ers, I'll be yelling, shoot the ball out <laughs> every time. That's usually the best thing that can happen for the Sixers when Philadelphia has the ball that Iverson shoots it. The United States leads Venezuela 52-35. This is the third game of the opening round in Group B of the FIBA Tournament of the Americas. This is a, the top three teams in this 10-team field will advance to the Summer Olympic Games in Athens, Greece in, in next summer. Well, one of the players on the United States team that has really been off to a, a terrific quick start has been Tracy McGrady. He came into play tonight leading the United States in scoring, and he leads the United States with 10 points in the first half. Our Craig Sager sat down with T-Mac to get his thoughts on the NBA, on life, and on being a member of Team USA. Grace, the last three years, you've single-handedly taken Orlando to the playoffs. How has your role different on this great team? <laughs> I do a lot of sacrificing. Everybody on here, you know, is the best players off their team. And uh, you just got to do a little sacrificing, whether uh, it's scoring one night or, or playing great defense one night. Uh, whatever you can do to contribute to this team. Uh, but you're not going to be the man on this team because everybody's great players on this basketball club. As the NBA's leading scorer, how much will this team rely on you to score? Oh, well, I mean, I, I bring a lot to the table, not just scoring. Um, I, I rebound, I get other guys involved, uh, I defend. So, uh, it, it, if, if, it's, you know, if it's that type of night where I have to go out and score 20, 25 points, then I'm capable of doing that. But I don't think the team have to rely on me to do so much scoring because we have a lot of guys on here that can score. This team obviously is very physically talented, very gifted, but what about the mental toughness? That's been the question mark ever since last year. I think guys now <clears throat> are mentally tough. Uh, that That's on this team opposing to last year. I, I think uh, once the guys lost one, one or two games and uh, mentally and they was just out of it, uh, really didn't care too much about uh, playing anymore. Uh, I, I think. You know, this team is, is more focused, uh, determined to prove that we are the better players and the international players. As a guy who's finished in the top four voting last two years in the MVP, what's it like to play on the court on the same team with two guys, Allen Iverson and 
Tim Duncan, who have won the last three MVPs. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm having the best time of my life. I, I still can't believe that I have, I'm wearing USA across my chest and playing with Tim Duncan, uh, and Allen Iverson, Jason Kidd, those guys that I face uh, on a night-to-night -night basis. Uh, but to have them as teammates has just, yeah. just been a blessing for me, going out and competing for our country. Uh, I've always dreamed of this opportunity, and, and now I'm here on this stage, and I'm enjoying it. It's the first time you've ever played for the United States. What took you so long, and uh, what's it been like? Well, it took me so long. Um, I just had to blossom into the player that I am today. I, I don't think I was ready a few years ago. Um, you know, but it, this is perfect timing. You know, guys didn't qualify uh, last year, and, you know, they played six, and, and here we are, have to qualify for the Olympics, which is a funny thing to me because uh, we're supposed to be the best players in the world, but, um, you know, it's just perfect timing to, to go out and represent my country uh, with a great group of guys and uh, to show that we are the better players. Things haven't always been this rosy in your career. You started out in Toronto, set the bench, or came off the bench for three years. Two years you played in the shadow of Vince Carter. What was your reaction when he, when he was named to this team? I was excited. You know, um, actually, we was uh, went to our family reunion together uh, this summer in Miami. Uh, not knowing that he was going to be on the team. And uh, I think a couple weeks later, he came over to the house and, and told me that he was going to be on the team and replace Kobe. And uh, I was just excited about re reuniting with uh, Cousin Vince. People said in Toronto you guys didn't get along all the time. <laughs> I mean, I, I really don't know why that was a talk because we couldn't get away from each other uh, in Toronto. You know, we was, I mean, it was family. I mean, we didn't have any beef. I wasn't jealous of him at all. I was, you know, a young guy trying to make a name for myself, and he was already a type of player that established himself to be a superstar in his league. And it really helped me because he was already there, and I was trying to get there, so I was just, you know, learning from him. And I don't know why everybody made it out to, to you know, that we had beef with each other. Um, it was never, you know, on that level. Um, I, I think because I went my separate way and, and left him behind and, you know, everybody had a different opinion about why I left Toronto, but it was never beef between the two. How has this team been able, now that you all are superstars, how have you been able to leave those egos at the door? Um, you, you just got to go out and, and play, man, and not worry about the other stuff. Um, just play a game of basketball and have fun, enjoy this. You know, there's a lot of people love to be in our shoes right now, um, supporting our country, representing our country on the basketball court. And uh, this is the best thing, you know, walking out there in front of thousands of people and you have the United States on your, on your chest. And uh, I mean, it's not, a, it's not a better feeling, man. And don't worry about all the other stuff. Just go out and play basketball and, and cherish every moment that you're out on the court. Playing with such talented teammates, did you ever think or did you ever stop and say, hey, if Grant Hill is healthy, this is the way it would be in Orlando? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, just playing with Vince those two years, um, I, I kind of got a good feeling of how it would be uh, playing with a guy like Grant Hill. But uh, due to injuries, it, that was never possible. And, and hopefully, uh, Grant could just get back healthy and, uh, you know, just, just try to get back on the basketball court. I don't know, you know, what the uh, future is going to hold, but. I just wanted to be healthy, and health comes first before he starts playing basketball. Tracy McGrady, 10 points in the first half. The United States leads at the break over Venezuela, 52 to 35. Dave Weekly, Mike D'Antoni here courtside in San Juan, and you know. He led the NBA in scoring this year, 32 points per game, Tracy McGrady did, and, and he, more than possibly any other player on the United States team, takes advantage of that three-point line being a little closer in international basketball. A three-point shot, you can go around the line, it's only 20 feet away from the basket. He's taking those shots in the NBA, it's worth only two here in an international play, it's worth three. Well, that obviously helps his point total. He's just an all-around player. There's no way you can guard somebody like T-Mac. You know, the Phoenix Suns, when we play them, our whole defense is set up to every time he touches the ball, we're going to double-team him. We know that he's the type of player that, that he's going to beat you, and you cannot let him go one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if you do, he, he could get 30, 40, 50 points, and he takes his team, and then they win with him. Uh, you know, it's too bad that Grant Hill 
isn't healthy, you know, he's another class act, and it would be great for the franchise, great for the NBA. We, you know, we all wish him the best getting back in there, and I'm sure with him, he and T Mac, they, they would be a heck of a team. No question about it. And uh, Grant Hill is talking about trying to return again this year for the Orlando Magic. This is the fourth of four games this afternoon in the FIBA Tournament of the Americas. Other action Mexico defeated Uruguay 80 to 68. Mike, Mexico has been one of the pleasant surprises in this tournament. Uruguay is still looking for their first win. Well, Nahara has been playing great. And this is, you know, this is perfect for him because he likes to get down and dirty. I mean, the guy will play on concrete and die for loose balls. Uh, he has been uh, phenomenal. Now he gets to shoot the ball. You know, you don't have the other 10 guys on the team that Dallas has, and he's able to uh, do a lot of things. That He's a little bit better offensive than people think. Argentina defeated Canada 94-90, and the Dominican Republic defeated the, the United States Virgin Islands 69-65. Team USA will play the Virgin Islands tomorrow at 5 p.m. Back to that Argentina-Canada game, just a great game. Argentina desperately needed to win that game after being upset in their opening game against Mexico. Steve Nash had a great game for Team Canada, 6 of 6 from the three-point line for 24 points. Mano Ginobili was only one of five from outside the arc. He had 19 points in that game, but he's a little happier tonight because Argentina got the victory 94-90. After the game, we caught up with them both. First, let's hear from Steve Nash. You're still a contender. Yeah, we, we're tough. We got a lot of guys who have a lot big hearts and play together, and, and we're a tough team to beat. Ask anybody. I mean, you know, look how how much bigger Puerto Rico and Argentina are than our teams and, and we beat one and we had a great chance to beat the other so you know I don't think anyone really likes to play against us and I think we're only getting better we got a lot of young guys who are just learning and coming along. Uh, well we have some uh, we have some key guys from the Olympic team but we're also missing some key guys you know we're missing a Todd McCullough who is a huge presence for us um, amongst amongst a few other guys well Fox and McGlure but they were they haven't played yet so we're missing some guys, but we got some young guys, and we're a little inexperienced, but we, they also provide us a lot of toughness and heart and, and that youthful energy we need. So, you know, we're a younger, different team, but I, I like our team. And who knows? As the tournament goes on, we can get better. Things are happening. Yeah, we, we've been always on track. Uh, it's just a loss, so it's not such a big deal. The thing is that, you know, we lost against Puerto Rico that a week ago. Uh, we bet, beat them by 40 points. So it, it, it was a pretty tough loss. It's not a regular one. But this is a long tournament. We have 10 games. So we already have time uh, to come back and still qualify. How's your energy after going through all the finals? NBA? Well, my, my energy is not uh, at a really high level now. Not because I don't want to practice, but we, we've been through a, a really tough uh, summer. We travel a lot, too many hours and flights. and buses and all that so I, I don't know if we get to the tournament that we're 100 percent but uh, while well, you know we already have three games so we got to be better be on sh in shape because if not we we're not going to make it Venezuela will play Brazil tomorrow night Craig Sager standing by with Richard Jefferson of Team USA well for the third straight night the USA has gone with the same starting lineup but obviously the role has changed a little bit you got action in the first half what have they told you what do they expect out of your game nothing just to go out there and play hard um, I'm playing the four sometimes I'm playing the three sometimes you know so just a matter of me going out there and do whatever the team needs you guys had 111 points one game 110 the other it's been since 1996 that Team USA has scored over 100 points in three straight. Is that a goal you guys try to get? No, no, it's not so much about points. It's just about how we play. When we play unselfish and everyone takes good shots, you're going to take, you're going to shoot a high percentage. You know, plus if you play good defense, you're going to get easy buckets. So that's what we're trying to do. You have the opportunity to play with Jason Kidd throughout the regular season. What is it like to play with him on an All-Star team when you also have a McGrady and a Carter and a Duncan? Well, it's great to see that, but more than anything, you see how much you know everybody would love to play with him, and he's so well respected throughout the league. You know, Vince and Trace would love to be on his team. You know, so I, I understand how lucky I am for the whole season. You wear Team USA, but is there extra pride the fact that there are three Nets along with Kenyon Martin? Without a doubt. You know, when I first came to the Nets, everyone told me how bad it was. You know, the curses and all these different things. You know, they had won 26 games before. You know, myself and some other guys and Jason Kidd came. So, you know, it just shows how far along we've come in just two years. It's like to be back with Mike Bibby. Oh, it's great. We grew up five minutes from each other. Uh, I followed him to Arizona, but we've never really played together, so this is a great opportunity. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, Dave. 
All right, Craig, thanks a lot. Richard Jefferson, very impressive young man. His parents were non-denominational Christian missionaries, and Richard traveled with them to Africa for missionary work. And now let's go ahead and revisit the, the group standings here at the FIBA Tournament of the Americas in Group A. And remember, four of the five teams in each of the two groups will advance. Mexico is the only undefeated team in that group. Argentina, Canada, Puerto Rico, though, Mike, look like they'll be advancing. Yeah, it looks like Uruguay's in trouble. They, they lost a the big game today, so they'll probably be the team that drops out. And as far as Group B goes, that's where the United States is dominating at this point. They are undefeated. The Dominican Republic with a win today. They are 2-1. and one. Brazil also at 1-1. One and one. Venezuela and the Virgin Islands still looking for their first victory in competition. And, you know, Venezuela will play the Virgin Islands. And on that game, whoever wins that game will probably advance, the other one dropping out. So tomorrow, Team USA will play the Virgin Islands. And while there will be four games on Sunday, Sunday will be the off day for the United States before they begin second round play on Monday. I do see some golf in the future, some USA basketball players. <laughs> I think uh, you're exactly right. I might make that right. prediction. From the first half, let's check the statistical breakdown. Well, you, you know, see. the thing that jumps out is the 29% field goal from the from the USA, is that right? Now, just flip-flop the yeah, team. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So, the United we, States is shooting 57% from the field. Exactly. Take our word for it, folks. They're dominating. Yeah. Set to start the third quarter. Team USA leading 52-35. Luis Julio will jump it up against Tim Duncan. Well, we'll see the second half if uh, Victor Diaz and... Uh, Guevara and Morris continues the three-point shooting. The only chance that uh, Venezuela has to say stay kind of close is, is just to shoot really well from the three because the inside is not going to get it done. Duncan controls the tap off to Jason Kidd. Here comes the United States in their blue uniforms trimmed in red and white. Venezuela in the all-white uniforms with maroon piping. That's going to be an offensive foul. They called O'Neal pushing off a little bit underneath. Duncan made a great move to the basket he that did. time. Couldn't finish it. Allen Iverson applying the pressure in the backcourt. No question, Larry Brown and his outstanding group of assistant coaches stressing defense here in San Juan, and it's paying off. Aguilera with a great oh. fake up and in, and a chance for a three-point play to begin the second half for Venezuela. Well, he got that off among two towers in there. That was a great shot. <laughs> great shot. And I'm sure you could relate to that painful expression on Larry Brown's face. Oh, yeah, I've been there before. <laughs> but, uh, but having a team like this, you, he doesn't have that expression very often. Aguilera with the three-point play. 52-38, just underway, third quarter. Just another reminder, in international competition, we play four 10-minute quarters. Jason Kidd, still looking for his first three-point basket of this event. Long bounce pass ahead to Torres. He controls it, can't score it. But he runs down the rebound. Boy, the long arms of Tim Duncan. He influences everything in the paint. You know, Team USA right now, they have to you know, pay a little attention. They just can't just come out and show up. They're going to have to play a little bit, so they're going to have to turn it up, keep up the pressure, keep pushing the basketball, get some easy shots. Here's another look at that block. Yeah, he's just he's inside with David Robinson last year. It was just a nightmare for anyone going inside. Torres down the lane. And it won't stay in for him. Duncan, the oh. rebound. Torres nearly took it back. Long pass ahead to Great Allen job. Iverson. A fantastic outlet pass. A 70-footer by Duncan to AI. Somebody lost a man. Oh. Well, the opportunities won't get much easier for Julio than that. Torres, the steal. Trying to beat Jason Kidd back to the goal. He got to the rim first and then missed the shot. Back-to-back -back easy opportunities missed by Venezuela. Duncan, the hammer, wave off the basket. Traveling called on Tim Duncan. 
That is unbelievable. Great, great feed by Kidd. Let's look at it again. Great feed. No way that's a walk. Guevara, too strong with a three-point attempt. Duncan collecting everything on the glass. Oh, Iverson spins away from that attempted steal. Rebound Jason Kidd and stolen away by Torres. Torres goes right by Jermaine O'Neal and puts it in. Torres is taking the ball away, away from Jason Kidd twice. That does not happen very often in the same game. Oscar Torres made the point earlier this week that he expects a lot of NBA scouts to be looking very closely at this tournament. But he's got to be aware of the fact that he wants to win for Venezuela and not to get a job back in the NBA. Two on one, Duncan. Oh, great play. Tracy McGrady, who's been on so many receiving passes for thunderous dunks in this tournament, that time the delivery to Tim Duncan. You know, usually a lob like that is a play that coaches pull their hair out because normal players, that ball goes up into the stands. But these great players, they have not messed up really one lob all night. Guevara knocks down a three. Guevara now with nine points. I know Tim wants to take a three. I know he wants to take one. Argentina now trailing by only 13. Six and a half to go third quarter. O'Neal is fouled in the paint by Julio. Venezuela trying to play a zone, trying to mix it up, trying to sag off probably Jason Kidd, make him make an outside shot. Here comes the lob. Grady. Duncan all over. Great, great finish. And a turnover by the United States. You know, so far, getting a quick start from Team USA has played against them. They got out to a comfortable lead, saw it was really easy. You kind of turn off your, your energy, and sometimes it's tough to pick it back up. Jason Kidd with the easy basket. The United States led by as many as 22 points in the second quarter, had a 17-point lead, 52-35 at the break. United States leading Venezuela, 58-43. Well, from here, that just looked like an awful call. Looked like O'Neal was there plenty of time. Let's see what happens. Maybe didn't set it up real well. Yeah, obviously jumped into him. But again, we talked, you know, two referees, international play. It happens. Second foul on Jermaine O'Neal. Diaz hits the free throw. You know, we talked about in other transmissions where the other games that we play, you cannot let a team hang around in international play because you could three-point line is too close, two or three threes are right back in it, and also refereeing is so bad that a couple, couple bad calls, and again, you know, fluke thing happens, they win. You've got to put teams away. Well, Team USA has been able to do that in the first two games of this tournament, and they've got a 13-point lead now as... Jermaine O'Neal is fouled. Team foul number two in the third quarter on Venezuela. Ball on the floor, picked up by Venezuela. Torres! Long pass ahead to T-Mac. McGrady answers right back for the United States. Just little things Venezuela cannot do if they expect to, to hang in there or have a chance to win. They cannot have a dunk on one end, one on zero. Four guys should have been back. Torres got to the rim but couldn't finish. Here comes Iverson. Oh. Allen Iverson nearly got the roll, and Iverson will go to the free throw line for two. What a help. What a helpless feeling. Watch Rivera. All he could do was foul him. I would hate to be the guy called back one-on-one, -on -one, Iverson coming at you full speed. Nothing you can do. Try not to give him three points. Try to give him only two foul shots. Roque Osorio, number 13 in white for Venezuela, checks into the game. Here's Allen Iverson at the free throw line.
Great dunk by Oscar Torres. You see right there, he's, he's the only Venezuela in the picture. America gets a dunk on the other end. You have four guys watching, watching the dunk and celebrating. Two free throws for Allen Iverson, 62-47 at the five-minute mark of the third quarter. Still a game. Oso Rio. See, right now, Venezuela has four three-point shooters on the floor. And they, they're causing some problems for Team USA right now. Coach United Brown, yeah, sorry, Coach Brown is going to want to talk this one over a little bit. The United States leads by 12, 62-50, 4.58 to go in the third. Now, in Team USA's previous two games against Brazil and against the Dominican Republic, by this point of the game, the United States was cruising. A couple of more three-point shots could make this very interesting. And we'll jump into the huddle with Larry Brown at Team USA. Well, obviously, we can't hear into the United States huddle. Well, I think we found the problem. I think I was listening to Larry Brown was speaking Spanish to him. Yeah, so that might be the problem. That could have been it. Now, he's just telling them right now they have four three point shooters. They cannot get sucked in, they cannot relax. Game is not over. Play basketball. Put Get them out of their rhythm, get them out of their comfort zone, push the basketball, make easy plays, get back to what they were doing at the first of the game. I mean, it's simple. It's not, it's not complicated. Just go out and perform. Well, obviously, the United States would like to turn up the heat on their perimeter defense. We saw the United States in a 2-2-1 zone defense briefly against the Dominican Republic last night. Well, right now we have uh, Majerus coming in running the point. Another good offensive player. So they still have three, four guys on the floor that can shoot from threes. Team USA is going to have to be ready. Jason Kidd brings it into the front court. We'll see if the United States can answer here as Venezuela is mounting a challenge here in the third quarter. McGrady. And the Venezuelan bench fired up, not allowing T-Mac to get the showtime slam on the baseline drive. He'll have to earn it at the free throw line. No doubt, last five minutes uh, of the third period, Team USA has given uh, a little shot of courage to Venezuela. They, they're enjoying this moment right now and trying to capitalize on maybe a little bit of deconcentration. McGrady with the free throw. One more to come. United States led this game by 17 points at the half. Their lead is 13 currently. Make it 14. We we'll see Iverson trying to pick up, trying to force the issue a little bit. The energy that Allen Iverson has is incredible. Is incredible. A backcourt violation. Eight seconds. How about that defense by Allen Iverson? Oh, he's amazing. He is amazing. Here's Iverson. And he is fouled. You know, being a Phoenix, I get to see Allen this close twice, twice every year, playing in the Western Conference. Now this week, getting to see him a lot. You know, I envy the fans of uh, Philadelphia. You get to see him every day. This guy brings it every day, great energy, He's doing a super job. Team USA in the bonus now. Iverson with another free throw to come. Allen Iverson with 11 points. Joining Tracy McGrady and Tim Duncan in double figures for the United States. A solid minute of play by the United States has pushed the lead back to 16 points. <laughs> A 
And Venezuela continuing to knock down the threes. Jermaine O'Neal, Duncan, went right over Diaz to collect it but could not drop it in. So the parade back to the free throw line for Team USA continues. But you know, that's the other flip side of the coin. They have four shooters and they do not have a, a, a big guy in there. Here, Duncan just keeping alive, great hands. His hands are so solid, so strong. Victor Diaz did everything he could possibly do. He had great rebounding position on Duncan, but Tim Duncan, 6'11", and with those extremely long arms, and he's so talented up around the rim, just took control of the basketball. You can see Duncan already with a double-double. Carlos Morris really gave Venezuela a lift in the first half with his three-point shooting off the bench. Violation. Should be a violation. Eight-second violation. Well, the shot clock obviously starts at 24. There are 15 seconds on the clock. Venezuela never got violation. the ball. That's a violation. That's a, another bad call. That, that should be the United States ball. It only took him. It only took him 12 seconds to get across half court. <laughs> Iverson had a hold of the back of the jersey, but Morris didn't didn't matter. He got the bucket, and Iverson shot oh, his block. A, yeah. uh oh, the bench is going crazy. They've gone nuts. <laughs> Nestor Salazar they are cannot believe it. Diaz, oh, the great pass, but his teammate. Mariaga could not control it. You know, Mariaga is only 19 years old. Not much of a body right now needs to fill out, but uh, you know the guy has some potential. His long arms, big hands. Mike Bibby needs Ray to improve Allen. his shot so he can play a four. Mariaga, you talked about him, Mike, and he couldn't get that shot to hang in, and it belongs to the United States. Here comes Ray Allen and Mike Bibby into the lineup. Now, Mariaga has a good chance. He has a good chance to be a good player. He has a, he has a chance. Number four, Ray Allen. Ray! Oscar Torres comes back into the lineup, replacing Victor Diaz. Now, Diaz is 35 years old. He played against the original Dream Team in the 1992 Olympic Games. And that would be a nightmare for him, I imagine. Rosemel Blanco into the game for Venezuela. Under three and a half to go, third quarter. Duncan puts it in, controlled it, and then just flipped it in calmly with a right hand from the low block. He made that look easy, Mike. <laughs> he does that. He does that. Just a great, great, great player. And you'll watch him. He, you know, now the game's got a little bit closer. He'll pick up his game, try to put him away. Morris could knock, knock down the three, and the ball goes out of bounds. And it'll belong to Venezuela. But t at the end of the third quarter, our Craig Sager will get a, a comment from Isaiah Thomas. And Allen Iverson thinks so much of Isaiah Thomas that he named his newborn son Isaiah. Inside, put up and in. Mijares with a basket. Bibby. Great pass. Going back to the strong side. Great play by Ray Allen. Mike Bibby with a dozen tonight. Steal by Tracy McGrady. Uh oh. Good passing by Venezuela leads to an easy basket. Oso Rio with the finish. You know, it's funny when McGrady went to do his dunk. He took a look, peek over his shoulder, saw his Oscar Torres, and go, well, I can dunk him because that's an NBA player. He won't undercut me. <laughs> Ray Allen. Behind the back dribble by Allen. 
And he lost the handle. It's a three on one. Torres. Stuff got too far under the basket. And McGrady lost it. Long pass ahead. Quickly, Venezuela with a two on one opportunity deflected out of bounds. Well, that was an ugly series of plays. <laughs> one gets stuffed by the rim, the other, a couple turnovers. Got a little ragged. Ernesto Mijares in the middle of everything for Venezuela. And we've got a timeout with a minute 26 to go in the third. Team USA 76, Venezuela 59. You know what stands out immediately is Venezuela had the momentum. They were going. They're hitting threes. Looks good. They're still down 17. Oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, they have not. They did get it down to 12. It looks like up. And then all of a sudden, a couple dunking here, there, a couple shots. Venezuela with oh, 11 three-point shots. <laughs> Well, we were trying to pick up some of the comments of Larry Brown, and I think mostly what we heard were some fans who are just going crazy behind the United States bench. No question, Mike, those tickets around the U.S. bench, those are the, the most valuable ones in the arena tonight. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they are. But it seems like every time the Team USA comes out, the benches, they don't know which bench. They, they move them off the one they think they have. So somebody's getting shafted. In and out on the three-point attempt by Oscar Torres. Quickly, Ray Allen into the front court. Allen goes baseline. Pass intended for Elton Brand stolen away. Uh, Venezuela is much more, uh, much more active on the defensive end. You... Ernesto Mijares running the offense now for Venezuela as we turn inside a minute to go third quarter. Oso Rio. Great anticipation by Mike Bibby. Great job. Mike Bibby with the steal and a whistle. You know, Venezuela is kind of hanging in the game, and Oscar Torres has, has not had a good game. And I didn't think that would be possible. I thought he would have to play extremely well for them to even, even be close. But you know, the nervousness that the Venezuelans clearly showed at the beginning of the game seems to be going away, Mike. Well, you know, you, they, they lost the game, had a day off. Uh, there were some jitters, no doubt about it. Playing Team USA, big game for them. You know, they've settled down. They've hit a lot of great three-point shots. They're playing, they're playing about the best they can play. United States now with an 18-point lead. <laughs> a little bit of uh, palming the basketball. There's Torres. Can't hit the three. Duncan the rebound. Shot clock is off. And the United States will hold for one shot. Going to spread it out here for Ray Allen. Down to five seconds. Yeah, Ray's just over penetrating just a little bit, leaving his feet. And Vincent is doing a great job of stunning toward him and, and kind of floating back on the man. He's having a hard time finding the open guy. He needs to give it up a little quicker. 3.3 remaining in the third. Uh -oh, looking for the lob. Duncan had a shot blocked uh -oh. by Blanco. Allen stole it. Got it. Oh. And they're going to wave it off. Oh, I don't know about that one. We'll have to check that at the table. Ray Allen appeared to steal the pass and bank in a three at the horn. 
Did he beat the clock? Uh, we'll see. Great block by Blanco. Great call. Looks like it was still in his hand. Good call. One more look. Yeah, the ball looks like it's still in his hand. Look at it one more time. That's a good call. Good call. That was a great call. It's a good call. We've given these officials a hard time, but they got that one right. Craig Sager with Isaiah Thomas. Well, Isaiah's a guy who was a perennial all-star. You also coached an all-star team. What's the keys to putting together a team of all-stars like this? To